Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Assalamu alaykum brothers. That's a difficult act to follow. I'll get some onions and start crying inshallah. Maybe I can... No. Inshallah, this is going to be a very brief talk. Um, and I want to really focus on a couple of points. Given the fact that, alhamdulillah, brother in the, um, the news watch, and also, mashallah, this uh, role play, talked a lot about Valentine's itself and some of the consequences. I want to broaden the discussion. And I actually want to talk about four or five very key points, inshallah. And that's what I want to talk about. Because there always comes a point in time in all of our lives, no matter how young, no matter how old, how old we are, that we've got to take things seriously upon issues. And we've got to always keep in mind that being serious doesn't mean we have to be 50 or 60 or 70 years old. And then we start taking things seriously. Being serious actually comes at the point of a very young age for each one of us. And as Muslims, that's when we hit, hit puberty, which is about 12 or 13, or my excuse, 35, just to give myself a bit more excuse. But it comes at a very, very early age. And with responsibility comes accountability. So what I want to do is talk about five key points in this subject about Valentine's and actually broaden it out. About two weeks ago, I was invited to give a talk about marriage at university. And after spending 30 minutes talking about marriage and love marriage, arranged marriage or Islamic marriage and that Islamic marriage and the concept of Islamic marriage is the only way to safeguard the individual, the society and that individual in the Akhirah, the very first question I got was what? You can't believe what the first question was. And from my perspective, I've been giving this talk for the last five years. And over the last five years in the same university, I've seen the questions have changed over time. First question was, oh, Brother Burhan, um, uh, yeah, I want to get married, so what's the halal way of doing it? Okay, khair, inshallah, here's the halal way of doing it. Oh, but that's difficult. All right, think about this. Three years ago, yeah, I've seen a real nice cutie girl, and um, I'm not sure the kind of language people use nowadays, but, you know, in my age, cutie girl, and um, what do I do? Okay, you should follow this process. Oh, but that's difficult. All right, then try this. Jaw, jazakallah khair. This year, the very first question was what? Uh, Brother Burhan, um, I've made a girl pregnant, what do I do? <laughs> In the space of five years, what the question was and what the questions have become. And the bizarre thing is, I expected that response, which is, ha ha ha, isn't that funny? Until you think of two things. What happens if that was your sister? then what would you say? And then you realize it's not really that funny anymore, is it? It's actually quite serious. And secondly, if you're the one who did it, what were the consequences in the dunya for you? And more importantly, the consequence in the akhirah, when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we realize all the fun and the jokes and the laughter that we tend to talk about these kind of issues is no longer funny anymore. There's actually a very serious underlying point that we need to very much think about. And that's why for me, in all my years and brothers who know me, giving these kinds of talks, it's always about trying to give a laugh and joke, to give a premise, to make people appreciate the subject. But there comes a point when we have to recognize this actually is a quite serious issue because of the significance of it and what it means. And I want to give you my second point, point that was alluded to earlier on. If I invited you to my house, not saying I would invite all of you to my house, Marshall, it would be a very expensive dinner. Yeah. <laughs> but if I invited you guys to my house, I've got a quite a strict rule in my household, which is, you know, you go to the zoo, don't feed the animals, that kind of stuff. Come to my house, don't feed my kids chocolates. Yeah. There's a certain rule. I want to make sure that the children have a certain understanding of their diet, of their habit, of their lifestyle. So if you're bringing chocolates, I munch it. The kids just watch me, yeah? <laughs> But you can imagine if you came into my household and suddenly you open up your bag and you show you all your chocolates, what do you think my children are going to do? They're not going to say, oh, uncle, no, no, we can't do this, subhanAllah, Allah's watching us, astaghfirullah, you know, my, my dad makes the laws in the house and we have to obey our father, Masha. They're not going to do that. What do you think they're going to do? Oh, uncle. <laughs> We love you. <laughs> don't tell my dad. Shh. They're gonna. You expect that to happen, don't you? They're not gonna take the moral high ground and say no, 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 no. We can't. You've actually connected to something which you're very keen to have. And if you draw that analogy to the point that's being made, 
When you go into society and you replace those chocolates, which will attract my children in the household, you replace those chocolates with the billboards that you see of half-naked, naked women. The movies that you see on a daily basis. What you see when you go to the local shopping and you see that flesh of meat walking past you. Not one, not two, hundreds of them. And come summertime, you think you are, you know, you, where, where can you look? Anywhere you're looking, you just, you know, ah, stuff for a look down and you've got images. You, oh my God, look up. Here. And you're struggling everywhere around you constantly. You go onto the internet, 75% of traffic on the internet is what? Pornography. And then you realize, like my children with chocolates, and the temptation is going to be there naturally. You find this society is pushing this frustration towards us and creating this pressure upon where you have to deliver. Otherwise, you're not a man. You have to deliver, otherwise, there's something wrong with you. You may be of the other type. Yeah. And you find you're struggling now because the pressure is there for you to deliver. And the expectation is very, very high. That you've got to be in a relationship or that you can have a relationship. And we find the pressure is huge. Not just because of the imagery. Not just because of what we see. But also because of role models. And role models who engage in this kind of stuff. What happens to them? Their popularity increases. People don't say, oh this is disgusting what this man has done. Whether his name is John Terry or, or Ty Goze. No, he's a man. It can happen to all the best of people. And the pressure is there for everyone to deliver. And we think, you know, can we be immune to this? And my point is, I do the one to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't get caught in this trap. But the danger is, when we start quoting statistics, we have a very dangerous attitude, which is what? Hasn't happened to me. Hasn't happened to my sister. Hasn't happened to my cousin. Alhamdulillah. Oh, yes, really bad what I read in the newspaper today. Oh, about this. And so. But one day, that could be you as a statistic. Because the impact of this pressure, and Valentine's is just the example, is a superficial example. Because that's just one day in a year. These billboards aren't there one day in a year, are they? I take my kids down the street, and for those who know, I've got seven children. I've only got two pairs of hands. Daddy, what's that? Don't look. Oh, no, no. And you're like, I wish I had just another five hands with me, but you don't. And my children are young. And I think to myself, subhanAllah, how do I protect my children from this? And one day when they grow old, they go to school, they go to college, and the pressure is there for them. How are they going to solve that problem? And we've all experienced it. And think about it. We've experienced it. And we know what the ropes are. Do you want your children to experience it? None of us do. And that's the second point for us to think about. The danger. Now the impact... The impact of this kind of pressure about boyfriend girlfriends and the significance of that impact of that is what? You saw a few statistics. I want to give you some other statistics. Just for us to think about. <clears throat> Domestic violence is at an all-time high in the West. Often you hear the media, the news, politicians, governments, think tanks saying, oh, within the Muslim community, there's a lot of domestic violence. Yeah, you've got to come to my household. It's against me. Yeah. My wife, why haven't you done that? D domestic violence. Yeah. But they always talk about the domestic violence against who? Against the woman from the husband in the, in the Bangladeshi community, in the Pakistani community, in the Arab community. They just don't know the truth. Yeah. But you hear these statistics, and the statistics are, are, are alarming. Are alarming. One in three girls... One in three girls beneath the age of 18 sexually assaulted. And you say, well, what's that got to do with me? I thought the talk was about Valentine's and boyfriend, girlfriend. But the issue is that what is the cauldron that you're living in? What is the pressure that exists? Because that frustration, when it grows and grows and grows, you've got to satisfy it some way, isn't it? If you can't do it in a legitimate way, even by getting consensus from another girl, you try to do any which way you can. 49,000 registered paedophiles in this country. Registered. I mean those who have been caught. <laughs> 49,000. And the question that we'd all ask is what? Uh, what about those who haven't registered? Subhanallah. 